To God be the glory. At midnight tonight, senators and congressmen whose terms will end and were not re-elected last election will eventually bow out and step down because they are no longer authorized to be there. The power, the privileges that they enjoyed for the past few years will no longer be granted to them. No more security detail for the congressmen and senators who are now ex-congressmen and ex-senators. No more ambush interview. Who would want to interview a person who did not win an election? No more privileges to speak with authority from the hallowed chambers of Congress and the Senate. They will become like you and me, private citizens of the Philippines. Because human election has termination, it has expiration, it can even be revoked. But our election into the family of God is final, eternal, and it has no expiration or revocation. Kindly open your Bibles to the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. It says here, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, Exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the four knowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with His blood, grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in His great mercy. He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fail. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes, even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you see in this passage is a contrast between human election and our election into the body, into the family of God. Because human election is based on different categories. Here you notice that the reason why your election and my election into the family of God is final, eternal, no revocation, no termination, is because it is based not on human knowledge, but on the four knowledge of God. Which means that from eternity, He already elected you and me. And it is 
for eternity. And this is the assurance that we have that unlike political leaders today, that their election into office is usually dependent on how they can perform their duties. We usually ask the question, what do these political candidates know? What do they have? What abilities and talents do they have so that we will elect them into office? There is a political analyst who said that one of the reasons why none of the opposition candidates made it to the magic 12, and this is his words, not mine. I'm just quoting him. And he said, the reason why none of the opposition candidates made it to the magic 12 is that they had no story to tell to the people. They simply wanted to destroy the story of another person. In politics, it is not enough that you try to destroy the story of the other person. It is also very important that you have a story to tell. If you look at our lives, there's nothing that we are proud to tell. Because the story of our lives is not nice. It is evil, dark, and ugly. Why would God elect us? Why would God choose us? If it is based on our story, based on our knowledge, abilities, and talents, there's no reason for us to be chosen and elected by God. But because of His mercy, Peter, Apostle Peter mentioned that. His mercy, His grace, and in His foreknowledge, He already saw you even centuries before you were born. Centuries before you even made your first step, He already knew you and He already elected you and me. And so there's no reason for us to fear na baka mawala yung ating election because it's never dependent on us. It's always dependent on His for knowledge. And it is established, our election is established by the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. So it is not us trying to be good. It's not us trying to be holy, trying to be righteous. It is the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us, who separates us from what is evil, from the world, from sin. He separates us and He makes us holy, righteous, and upright in God's sight. So here, our election is really sure because it is based on the foreknowledge of God and it is established through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, a person who believes that he is part of the elect will submit to the sanctifying work of the Spirit. It is unthinkable for a person to say, now that I am chosen and elected by God, I can do what I please. I can continue living in sin because I am already eternally member of the family of God. It is inconsistent because Apostle Peter said, the moment you are elected into the family of God, God starts sanctifying you. So we become consistent with the characteristic and nature of God. And we are now given the power to obey. That's what he said here. It is to obedient to Christ and sprinkled with his blood. It is impossible for a person to obey unless he has been changed. He has been sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Let's, I think some of you heard what President Duterte said a few days ago. He said, Surrender na ako. Nandyan pa rin ang corruption. Nandyan pa rin ang illegal gambling. He now admits that he cannot change the human heart. He cannot. 
He can put corrupt people to prison. He can run after illegal drug dealers. He can put them in prison and if they fight, he is authorized to shoot them. But he can never change the human heart. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. That's why I believe illegal gambling, illegal drugs, corruption will continue even after the term of President Duterte because unless a person is moved from the spirit of darkness into the spirit of light, he cannot obey Jesus because we can only obey Jesus if we are now changed from within. Therefore, it is important that we realize that our election is sure. We should not go around saying, I'm not sure if I will be saved or not. We can go around humbly saying, by the grace of God, by the mercy of God, I am going to make it. Because I am already a member of the family of Jesus Christ. I am now sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And I am now living a life that is obedient to Christ. But the question perhaps that many of us would ask is, in the meantime. Now there is this promise that we will make it. We will receive the result of our faith, the salvation of our soul. That is already guaranteed to us. But in the meantime, we are facing a lot of challenges. We are facing a lot of difficulties in this world. We have so many things against us in this world. How are we going to live our lives? How are we going to respond to the different challenges that we face in this world? Apostle Peter said, the first thing that you should do, knowing that you are already elected into the family of God, that the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit is already in you, and you are now given the power to obey Christ, the first thing that we should do is to rejoice. To be joyful in the midst of the challenges. How can you rejoice in the midst of all the difficulties and the challenges? The only way we can rejoice is when our minds and our hearts are always focused on the promises of God. Because it's very difficult to be joyful in the midst of challenges and difficulties. Sometimes we try to fake happiness. We wear nice clothes. We drive nice cars. We stay in a nice home. But when people look into our eyes, they would realize whether we are happy or not. Do you realize that? That you can never fake what is inside you. It's either there is joy or none at all. And there's a man by the name of Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. He was a very popular man, a member of the U.S. Supreme Court for 30 years. His mind, wit, and work earned him the unofficial title of the greatest justice since John Marshall. So itong si Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. was really a very talented, very popular judge. And at one point in his life, he was asked, Judge Holmes, how did you choose your career? How did you become a very good judge? And his answer was, actually when I was young, I wanted to be a pastor. So people were surprised. Oh, bakit ka naging judge? Gusto mo pala maging pastor. But he said, I might have entered the ministry 
if certain clergymen, may mga pastor din siya when he was young, did not look and acted so much like undertakers. Naintindihan niyo ibig sabihin ng undertaker? Yung bang nagdadala ng bangkay? Doon sa, yung nag-aayos ng bangkay? He said, I wanted to be a pastor when I was young. But when I look at the pastors around, they were not happy. They look like undertakers. Ang haba ng mga mukha. How do we manifest joy if there is no joy in our hearts? But if we already experience the election, the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, the power to obey Jesus, then we can be joyful even in the midst of difficult situation. Are you familiar with John Jacob Astor, America's first multi-millionaire, the richest man in America at the time of his death on the Titanic. Kasama pala siya sa Titanic. Are you familiar with John D. Rockefeller, founder of Stanford Oil Company and the richest man in America at the time of his death? W.H. Vanderbilt owned 200 million dollars when he died. Andrew Carnegie was a multimillionaire. Henry Ford, a multimillionaire. Listen to what they said. John Jacob Astor said, I am the most miserable man on earth. The richest man in America until he died. John D. Rockefeller said, I have made millions but they have brought me no happiness. W.H. Vanderbilt said, The care of $200 million is enough to kill anyone. Andrew Carnegie said, Millionaires seldom smile. And Henry Ford said, I was happier when I was doing the job of a mechanic. Because in this world, material, financial, physical things cannot put joy in the heart. It's only the knowledge that we already belong to the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. In India, they have a closed caste system. You do not choose your caste. You are born into it. And they do not mix. If you are born into the Brahman, that's the highest, you cannot go down. If you are born to the lowest, the untouchables, you cannot go up. You will die where you were born. There was a Brahman in western India he was very rich, very influential, but one day he accepted Jesus Christ and was baptized. By his confession of faith in Jesus Christ and his decision to be baptized, he lost everything. His possessions, his houses, his fields, his wells, his wife, his children, his parents. Everyone rejected him. And we think that if you are rejected by your caste, you can transfer to the other caste. No, you are an outcast. You don't belong to anyone. And so what he did was he transferred from one place to the other. He tried to catch fish, but when the people saw him catching fish in their ponds, they would drive him away. He would look for food in the garbage dump. His life was not easy. And people would follow him. Reporters would follow him because they knew him. And they said, why? Why are you doing this? How do you bear your sorrows, your pain, and your suffering? And he would respond with a smile. And he said, why don't you ask me 
how I bear my joy. Because there is a lot of joy in my heart when I followed Jesus. We respond to the challenges around us by rejoicing even in the midst of challenges. And secondly, Apostle Peter tells us that we should live our lives in this world with perseverance. I think the word persevere is connected with severe situations in life. You cannot persevere when life is comfortable. You cannot persevere when everything is doing fine in your life. Perseverance only appears when life is so difficult, life is so painful, and yet a person continues because he knows that at the end of the journey, something awaits him. And I believe that's the reason why we persevere. Regardless of what people say, we, regardless of what people do, we persevere because we know that God has already given us something. God has already granted to us something that the world does not have. We persevere. Perhaps some of you could probably read the life of Wilma Rodolph. How, how many of you have read the life of this remarkable lady? She was a victim of polio when she was a child. I had a cousin who had polio when he was a child and he does not walk very well. Wilma Rodolph sup suffered from polio as a child. Her left leg became crooked and she, she wore metal braces until she was six years old. At age 11, through sheer diligence and determination, she forced herself to walk without braces for the first time. Have you seen a polio victim walking? Her older sister was a good runner. And at age 12, Wilma started to think about running. Here is a girl who has difficulty walking, but is desirous to run. Wilma started with this decision, and she presented herself to a coach, and she asked a coach to train her. The coach looked at her and said, okay, I'll train you. In two years, she outran every other girl in her high school in Clarksville, Tennessee. Nobody could catch her in her school. A year and a half later, she outran every other high school girl in the whole state of Tennessee. Two years later, in 1956, she ran in the Olympics in Melbourne, Australia. And won, the bronze, and won the bronze medal. Four years later, in 1960 in Rome, she had paid the price. She won and she won big. She won the 100 meter dash gold. She won the 200 meter dash gold. She anchored the United States relay team and won three gold medals. A lovely little disabled black girl reached for the gold. We already received what is ours. But if we are joyful and persevering, I believe, brothers and sisters, not only a physical and material gold is waiting for us, but the salvation of our souls in the presence of the Almighty God. Allow me to show you a video of what is happening in China today. Many of us are quite 
angry with what the Chinese did to our fishermen, but I believe God is working in the lives of the many Chinese who for many years have suffered, and today they are given the chance to rejoice and even persevere in the midst of the challenging times. Let's watch this. This is a rural area of Henan province in China's heartland. The nearest city is about an hour's drive away. People here are poor, earning less than 150 US dollars a year from their wheat and corn crops. Many of Henan's 3.8 million Christians live in remote rural areas like this and find it very hard to get Bibles. That is why hundreds of people from the surrounding areas flocked to the church in this small village when they heard that a Bible distribution van would be visiting. The van was welcomed into the village like a celebrity. Bible Society representatives handed out 700 Bibles to rural Christians. For many, it was the first Bible they had ever owned. For many of the Christians who are owning the Bible for the first time, especially in the villages, in the rural areas, yeah, you could see tears in their eyes, you could see you know, joy uh, and gratitude. Yeah. Some of them would come up to me and to us, to thank us for giving this precious gift of the Bible. I mean, I've met people who have been waiting for the Bible for the last 10 years, 14 years, and uh, they're precious, yeah. Let's stand as we pray, especially for brothers and sisters in China. Many of them received the Bible for the first time since Mao Zedong enforced communism and forced them to read the Red Book. Now it is the Bible. Many people believe that in 2030, China will be the third largest Christian country in the world. Let's pray. Father, thank you that indeed even in the midst of difficulties and challenges, your election of your children, you have chosen us even before the foundation of the world to be sanctified, to be holy, righteous in your sight, to be obedient to your Son, Jesus Christ. So, Father, we pray, especially for brothers and sisters who are in difficult lands. For many years, Christians in China suffered. Millions died. But today we see that those who persecuted them are gone. The Bible is now being distributed in many places in China. And we are praying that those people 
who have received your word with a joy in their hearts, with tears in their eyes, knowing there's nothing in this world that can give them real peace and joy than knowing that we who used to be outcasts are now members of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for the missionaries, church leaders who are working in those areas. We pray for your covering upon them. And we in the Philippines should not forget that we are enjoying peace and security and the freedom to worship you, whereas people in other lands may not have the same freedom that we have. We just commit them unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated.